Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Backyard Horse Enthusiast. Passion, dedication, expertise, these are the pillars of stable wellness, founded by the extraordinary Dr. Sandra Harvey, whose lifelong love for animals began on a small hobby farm in rural Pennsylvania. After a life-changing accident introduced her to chiropractic care, Dr. Harvey knew her destiny to help humans and animals feel their very best. Armed with a doctorate in chiropractic medicine, a master's in nutrition, and a remarkable array of certifications from animal osteopathy to advanced rehabilitation techniques, Dr. Harvey has become a trailblazer in holistic medicine. At Stable Wellness, every client is treated like family. Since 2013, they've been on a mission to maximize health and healing for people and their animal companions. With a deep commitment to continuous learning, Dr. Harvey developed her own groundbreaking protocol, movement enhancing body work, blending expertise with compassion to bring wellness to the next level. We sincerely care about your well-being and your trust means the world to us, Dr. Harvey shares. Whether it's chiropractic, nutrition, or innovative therapies, Stable Wellness is here to help you and your animals live healthier, happier lives. Stable Wellness where passion meets purpose for the love of animals and the people who care for them. Hey, Dr. Harvey, welcome to the Backyard Horse Enthusiast. So happy to have you here today joining us. Yes, thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Oh my goodness. Wow. You are my first chiropractor. So this this will be fun. Not my Not my first interaction with one, but my first interview. So this is really cool. I've got some questions for you that I think our viewers would be interested in uh, the answers. And so I'm going to begin with my first question, which is, can you share your story behind your journey into chiropractic care and equine osteopathy? And what inspired you to take this to go down this path? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, you know, grew up around horses and um, got my first horse when I was like 14. Um, always had kind of a, a rough and tumble life, you know, playing around with my older brother and all the neighborhood kids. And um, I went originally went to the University of Finley uh, in their Western equestrian program. I wanted to work with horses and why not do college in horses at the same time? And um, I actually got really hurt. I hurt my low back really bad um, while riding a colt. And it was then that I was decided that I would like to walk when I'm 50. And um, horse horse training um, moved down on the on the list for me. And it was actually while I was in school at Finley that we had a demo from an equine chiropractor. I had no idea at the time that it was a thing. I had been to chiropractors before. They'd made a huge difference in my life um, with sports injuries and um, just daily injuries of, you know, being a kid. And um, at that day, uh, I remember I went back to my dorm and I was like, that's it. Like, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And that's what I'm going to do the rest of my life. And about a year later, I was enrolled at the Logan College of Chiropractic, and um, almost four years after that, I graduated with my doctorate, and um, as well as my uh, animal chiropractic training, because it's two, you know, it's a separate certification to get your animal chiropractic, and um, and then through the years, I graduated uh, twelve years ago, and through the years of just being an animal chiropractor, I was, I've been a full-time animal chiropractor since the moment I graduated. Um, I never, I've never had a human practice. I never wanted a human practice. I went to chiropractic school to work on animals okay. and, um, and then through all of that, I'm 
kind of addicted to, uh, to learning. Um, and so I'm always taking new courses. Uh, and that is, there's always something more of always looking for the next piece, the next piece of the puzzle. What more can I do to help these horses? What more can I do to help myself? And that led me to equine osteopathy. Um, and I got, I just graduated from my, with my equine osteopathy, um, a few months ago, actually. And, um, just here I am. <laughs> what is equine os osteopathy? What is it? It sounds like something with skeleton. Is, is it, yeah. what is it? Yeah. It is. Yeah, so okay. It's it's very similar to chiropractic. Um, so back when chiropractic started, um, chiropractic and osteopathy um, were founded on very similar but different principles. Um, chiropractic, they went along the nerve root side, whereas osteopathy went through the, um, the blood and the artery is supreme. And so two different tracks with the same end goal, basically. Um, and the reason why I took the osteopathy course is because I saw shortcomings in the in my chiropractic training and saw things that I needed answers to. I needed to know how to fix these issues that I couldn't currently truly fix. And um, so it took me through the um, osteopathy in order to give me more tools in my bucket. Um, I, I, I like tools. I like having lots of, lots of things to fall back on. I like having lots of experiences and, um, osteopathy has enabled me to just add more to my overall plethora of things that I, and courses that I, that I've done. I mean, I've also done myofascial, John Barnes, myofascial release. I, you know, kinesiology tape, I'm Graston certified, um, acupuncture, well, acupressure. Um, I, I do shockwave, cold laser, you know, I've got gait analysis. I go, I have a lot of things for a lot of different issues and, um, and they all have their place. And so the osteopathy was just another learning opportunity, another tool in my, in my bucket and, um, a, another way of looking at how can we help these horses because they all desperately need it. Yeah. Yeah. What was one of the, like a common issue that chiropractic medicine was not helping that you kept, you know, that kept coming up or, or maybe there's a few. Yeah. yeah. So the biggest thing the biggest issue that I was having is I, I was getting really good results with just chiropractic. Um, you know, uh, the, the fact that, you know, removing the subluxations to target the nervous system and in order to make the horse, make the animal move better. And, and so, and that's all great, but owners aren't calling me and saying, well, I, you know, I think my horse has a subluxation that's causing this, this, and this. They're calling me and saying, my horse is bucking and I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Um, and so some of the issues, like I, you know, like I said, I was getting really good results with just chiropractic, but the osteopathy has enabled me to take a deeper understanding in more of the, um, not woo woo, um, more, more of the, um, how do I put this? Um, a deeper understanding into the soft tissue aspect of the body and the, um, my mind is completely blank. The word I'm looking for. <laughs> all, it always, when, when yeah, you yeah. it, you're like, where are you? I used a couple yeah. words today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but basically just being able to look at the body differently. Um, the osteopathic program that I went through was a um, made for equine. Um, the animal chiropractic program I went through was made for equine and canine. And um, whereas the chiropractic is we solely are, you know, the course solely focused on chiropractic, on the bones, the skeletal system. There was no real soft tissue um addressed in it. And by taking the osteopathy course, I've been able to get different self tissue techniques to be able to get in depth 
working into the soft tissue with the, you know, targeting the life force and the myofascial system and the, um, the inner workings of the body and be able to touch on a much more energetic level than what I was just getting in terms of the skeletal system and the skeletal work. Makes sense. Wow. Yeah. It really leaves you wondering, well, I know I'm decades older than you, and I've been riding since I was four and my dad had a big riding stable and we showed and all that. But I look and think back to those days, you know, we're jumping, we're barrel racing, we're doing so much, but we, we didn't have these tools like you have. And it just blows my mind that in this day and age, I've got a massage therapist, a chiropractor, PEMF, like you name it. It's like, do it all, do it all. I just write the yep. check, just do whatever <laughs> makes this boy happy, you know, but Absolutely. there's so much to it. Yes. And, and so often, you know, they're trying to tell us, they're trying to communicate with us that there's, there's more, there's pain, there's something going on. And then horses end up in a bad place be, because it's not being taken care of. You yeah. know, it's absolutely. And oftentimes I really truly believe that granted, there are people out there who just don't care or, you know, purposely do bad things. Um, but the general population, like they want to do good and they're doing the best with the knowledge that they have. The knowledge that they have is just severely, severely lacking. They don't know that these options are out there or they've had a bad experience with somebody who maybe claimed that they knew information that they didn't truly know or you know that their practitioner just wasn't taught appropriately or they only had a small piece of the puzzle and so the horse did doesn't make this miraculous um issue you know uh mir this miraculous um recovery but it's because we miss so much of it. And I, you know, people tell me, oh, well, I didn't have, we didn't have to do this 20 years ago. Well, you did. We should have. You should have, but yeah. the options weren't there. But also the way that we've taken, we take care of horses is totally different. And, you know, it, it with the feed changes and the hoof care changes and dentistry, like there are so many better ways to do things these days. And when people tell me, oh, well, you know, we didn't, uh, I, I've been feeding oats for 30 years. And and I look at them and I go, oh, okay. Like there's a better way to do things. And I, I, I'm, when I'm feeling it, I, I look at them, I say, so are you using the same cell phone that you did 30 years ago? Are you driving the same car that you did 30 years ago? No, like we upgrade everything else in our lives. So why aren't we upgrading the technology and, and the information that we have for our horses? And that's mm. also a big part of what I do is just teaching and knowledge and trying to, you know, help people who want this information or help people to understand there, there is a better way. And, and I also, you know, I want to save people money, stop, you know, wasting money on 30 different supplements, just feed good hay, you know, and if, take, spend your money wisely where it needs to be spent. And, and just, and then you don't have to worry about all of these other things. Indeed, indeed. And that's the reason for this program for this channel, as well as to educate. And that's why I enjoy bringing people like you, experts, I consider experts to educate so that we can't, you know, continue to use ignorance as an excuse as to why our horse ended up in the slaughter pipeline, you know, because it had behavior issues. Absolutely. And it, you know, it comes down to, you don't know what you don't know until you don't know it. And I, I'm, always, I'll be the first to admit, like, I don't know everything. So I surround myself with the people who know it, who, who are the best of the best of what they do. And that's what I strive for. I'll never know it all. And that's okay. I, I don't have an ego to need to know it all, but I know more than the average person. And so I can, and I feel that it's a, 
honestly is a um, responsibility of mine to be able to tell these other people and teach people, whether it's other practitioners or just the the lay person who doesn't know anything like, you know, it's a responsibility of, of mine to help them help their own horses because I'm one person, I can only do so much, but if I can educate 30 people and then they can go and, you know, help their own horses or they, you know, just one little tidbit that they can take to every horse that they touch for the rest of their lives. Like that, the number of horses that we can help by very little interaction is, is insurmountable and it's amazing. And that's a big part of why I choose the education courses and the things that I do so that I can help as many as I possibly can, both the humans and the horses. Beautiful. Well said. What unique challenges and rewards have you found working with humans as, you know, (laughs) because you got to deal with them as well as their horses? I would say the biggest challenge working with doing what I do is just accepting the lack of education And, you know, I, like I said, I truly believe that most people think that they're doing everything at the the best. And it's simply because the information that they have at that point is all that they know. Mm -hmm. And when they're open-minded and they want to listen and they want to learn and they want to grow and they want to change, that's my favorite thing ever. I'll spend four hours with somebody, you know, going through their horse, telling them like, no, like, let's try this. Let's do this. I'll give them, you know, lists of people to contact. These are the farriers. These are the dentists. These are the, these are the people who you need to, to really, truly help your horse. But it, you know, if I come up and I see a horse whose feet are atrocious and I say, well, when was the last time your horse, you know, had his feet done? Oh, last week. Okay, well, here's why you might want to look at a different farrier because X, Y, Z, the feet lead to the legs, lead to the body. And I, I can help your horse, but I can't fix your horse as long as they have bad feet, as long as their angles are incorrect and their angles are incorrect because of X, Y, Z and, you know, point these things out. And most people, you know, they, they hire their farrier, they hire their dentist, their body worker, expecting them to be an expert and, unfortunately there's a lot of misinformation out there and and so that makes it super hard and super frustrating for me because i know these people want the best for their animals I, you know and and they're they're looking for the best and they're trying to get the best and just the information that they're getting is either outdated blatantly wrong or hopefully not harmful yeah sure you know and i've i've Often, it, 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 and I'm sure you encounter this as well. Um, when someone say they ask me, "Oh, do you know a, a good farrier?" and then the second thing out of their mouth is, "Well, how much does he charge for? How much does she charge for?" And I, I'm, I don't mean to. I'm not. It's not a snobby thing. It's not that at all. But for me, my head says. That that's like the last thing I know finances. I'm not rich by any means. However, I am that person who will cut her own hair, give herself a pedicure and drive a very old car so that my horse gets like the best of everything because I'm, I'm his advocate. Like he has to, right? So I know I am paying probably top of the, for my farrier for his feet, but his feet are everything. And yes, we're on a six week schedule. And yes, I'm standing over my poor guy, Mark. He's such a saint. Anything you need to point out? Are we good? Or do we need to maybe go to four weeks? And he's like, Amber, I would tell you, I would tell you if there was something he needed. We're good. We're good. Okay. Okay. Cause I just, I always want to do the best. Oh, absolutely. And you, you hit the nail on the head. And probably my biggest frustration is we are their advocates. They didn't sign up for this. It's my responsibility to make sure that they're fed. 
properly. They've got water. Their feet are done. They're in a healthy environment. They've got turnout. They've, you know, that's my responsibility because my horse didn't ask to do any of this crap. Like they didn't ask to come and play these stupid human games with me. They'd rather be out eating in the pasture and ignoring me, you know, that that's, and the reason that they do these stupid human pet tricks for us is because they're an amazing, amazing creature that we truly don't deserve. And they'll put up with so much because hopefully not out of fear, but unfortunately, you know, when you get into, you know, into the show world, a lot of it is out of fear. And, but we're, I, I'm my horse's advocate. Nobody's going to look out for my horse's well-being more than I am. And nobody should. And so that also, you know, it comes with education as well. Like, let's learn better to do better. And we'll have a better relationship with our horses. And if we spend a little bit more money on the good farrier, on the dentist, then you don't have to have them massaged every month. You don't have to see, you know, the chiropractor every two weeks. You don't have to have these things because their base is sound. Their feet are good. Their teeth are good. Their livelihood is good. And so in the long run, you know, it's these simple, basic things that, that people want to often overlook. Oh, well, I just spent, you know, X, Y, Z on, on having all these people out to fix my horse, but they're still not right. Well, that's because their base is wrong. Their feet are terrible. They, you know, they've got a huge malocclusion in their mouth or their saddle doesn't fit or they're not, you're not feeding them appropriately. And so we as advocates, like it's us. Our horses didn't ask for this. They don't want to do any of this. They do it because they're just amazing creatures. No, oh, amen, sister. Hmm. Wow. Can you tell us more about stable wellness as far as what services you're offering? What sets it apart in the field of wellness for horses and their owners? Yeah, absolutely. So stable wellness is its backbone is um, based around chiropractic and through all of my certifications and all my schooling and all the thousands of hours of education that I've done um, in the last 12 years, I found faults and greatness in every program. There's never going to be a program that's perfect out there. There's never going to be a a um, foundation that's that's perfect. You're never going to have one style of body work that's that's going to be perfect for every horse out there. And so, what I done with stable car stable wellness is I have through all my education taking the pieces of that I thought were the most important of all of these courses and kind of put them all together into what I call movement enhancing body work. Um, and if I went back, like I probably would not be able to pass an animal chiropractic course right now because of the way that I have changed so much um, in, in how I do things and found a better way, not only for the horses to respond better, but also for me physically. Chiropractic is a very, very physical thing. I'm five, four, like I, you know, I don't, I don't have a lot of mass behind me. I've got a lot of speed from, um, you know, years and years of practice, but it, it's extremely hard on your body. And through all of these years, the, what's amazing is you don't need this force. You don't need to be forceful for a horse. Like the lighter and the more in tune you are into their nervous system and into their well-being, the better results you get. And so by being able to combine some myofascial release techniques and some fascial line activation and some, you know, skeletal soft tissue and neuro um, things all into one that I call movement enhancing body work, I... I get very, very good results and people don't need, I, I don't have to see people as often. So I might charge a little bit more, but I only have to see you 
you know, a couple times a year, as long as you keep up on their feet and their teeth and their livelihoods. And, you know, and I push all of these things. Like, I, I don't want to have to see your horse regularly. I don't want to have to see him every couple weeks because that tells me that either A, something is really, really wrong, um, or B, I'm not doing my job appropriately. And, um, and so I, I'm constantly, like I said, constantly taking new courses and, and taking those pieces and going, oh, man, that that is life changing and add it to what I do and, you know, tweak things a little bit. And and I guess I'm a, a master at pulling out the important pieces and and making it all work together coherently into what I call movement enhancing body work. Mm, makes perfect sense. What do you do to speak of the nervous system? And I am an equine gestalt practitioner, but so I work with people, but I am sometimes assisted by my Dakota. Mm -hmm. um, and he's just there. He co-coaches. He's there to clear chakras and they're great Reiki masters. Uh, yep. They're just amazing. But like, what do you do when you sh show up at a bar and say it's the first time? And I'm sure you have to be really in touch with energy. I'm sure you must feel the energy coming from everything. <laughs> I hate to call them owners, but yeah. you know what I'm saying here, right? Like, yes, yes, I do. Do you have to sometimes like take that person and like, <laughs> do a breathing exercise with them like I do with my clients like okay we're gonna do the box breathing or I mean it, sometimes yes but oftentimes I'm I'm really good about being able to block things out and just tell the horse you're with me you're with me ignore everything else going around you and mm -hmm. then there is the occasion when you just put the horse in the cross ties and you say you know what? I'm really thirsty. Do you think you could go to the house and get me a drink of water? I love um, it. Or, or you know, give uh, give give the owner a, a task, give them a job for them to to step aside and to step away, and then you have you know this this real quick deep interaction with this horse and be like, look, she's gonna come back in a few minutes. I've got you. You're safe. We're in this together. I'm gonna help you. Ignore everything else that's going on. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Wow. I love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, because there are times when I'm driving to the to the barn and I'm hyped up about uh, something that's happened in my day. Right. But I am very knowing that a horse can feel that energy has such a large energy field. I won't step. I'll be breathing and anchoring before I even as I'm driving up the driveway and before I get out of the car and it's like this pull to my Dakota, like I step out of the car and he can be way across the pasture and here he comes da -da 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 doing a happy dance. And I know that wouldn't happen if I stepped out of the car with a really heavy energy or my brain was really chaotic and I was dysregulated because that can't feel safe to a horse. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, they they're so much more sensitive than than us to literally everything. I mean, they are massive, energetic beings and they're prey animals. So they have to be in tune with everything else around them because the bear will eat them. <laughs> and so they either have to run or they have to fight or uh, hopefully not freeze. And so, you know, they, they're masters at reading energy. And so every horse, like, you know, you come up, you talk to them. I do a lot with um, fascial lines work. Um, I use tuning forks on them to, you know, clear out that system. And that's, a, that's what I do first with any, kind of any horse. And it just really, it gives me a blank slate. They, it resets everything. It puts them in a, a zone of safety and a zone of zen. And it kind it just resets their neurological system. It resets the soft tissue and it lets, and you know, I can just talk to him like, yep, you're with me. We're here. This is what we're doing. You're safe. We're good. And, and I can also, you know, be talking to the owner and cause people always say, well, what are you doing? Like, what's is, what is that thing? What is that funny little metal thing you're doing? And, um, 
And, and by describing to the owner what we're doing, the horse hears it as well. And even though they may not know the words I'm saying, the intent of what I'm doing, the horses feel and they know mm -hmm. and you see them, you know, drop their heads and relax and and just really respond to the energy and everything that's going on. And um, and, and so just with being such energetic beings, you know, yeah, you you got to step into their zone and you got to and staying close with them also like horses either like you away or close they want you touching them or they want you 10 feet away and so when you kind of hover in this like gray area of a bubble for them they they don't know how to read you they don't know you know are, are you with me are you not or are we in this are we out what are we doing who's in charge because horses inherently don't want to be in charge they're prey animals we are the predator they want us to tell them you're safe i've right. got you just stand there that's all you have to do. You're going to feel better. It's all you need to know. The rest is okay. That's all that matters. And, and you know, if an outside force comes in and, you know, there's, uh, who knows, you know, the dog comes crashing in or the, you know, somebody has an accident outside or the owner is just, you know, one of those buzzy people, uh, you give them a task, give them something to do, have them walk away. But the owner, the, the horse knows that the owner is like that anyway. Mm -hmm. And, and they're, usually pretty good at adapting to that. And then when you bring your down-regulated um, energy in, the horse can can slip into that parasympathetic mode and just be with you and say, all right, you got me. I can shut off the sympathetics and I can just be. Mm. And, and the change is just awesome. And, you know, that was also, you know, something that I've learned through all my years. And it's a, you know, it's a huge part of, of working with them. And I think why I get better than average results um, by accepting that energy is everything. And um, yes, I'm addressing your skeletal system and your soft tissue and your, uh, your nervous system by uh, with an outside force. But at the same time, I'm, I'm taking care of your energy. I'm telling you, you know, this is, this is a half hour when you don't have to make decisions. I got you. I got it. We're good. You just stand there, like take it all in. And if you don't like it, you let me know. And I'll back off and I'll try something else. You're not allowed to be rude. You're not allowed to be nasty, but you're allowed to tell me that you're not okay with this. Yes. Yes. Do you know, I had this 28 year old gelding navicular. We did everything with, as I did with all my horses, <laughs> whatever they needed, they got. But when the farrier would come, one thing is that I would always, no matter who was coming to the barn, I shared that with them in the morning at feeding. Hey guys, you know, the farrier, whoever it was, was is going to be here today or, or Tufts, the vet is coming, blah, 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 blah. And it's really crazy because when I took that time to just spend with them and let them know, you know, what was going on, I know it sounds woo woo and crazy, but I'm telling you this worked when I did that. Whoever it was, whatever professional would show up and those horses were just like groovy, cool. I, you know, like nothing. And even, you know, Tufts University is who I used for years as my veterinarians and they would bring residents with them. Everybody, sometimes be a whole crowd of people and the, the horses would refuse to leave when they would get done with whatever they were doing, whether it was vaccinations, teeth, it didn't matter. And the vets would always comment like, what that your horses are so different. Like most people have to chase their horses to catch them. And then they run away. They're like, I'm done. Get me out of here. And not these horses. And I think it's because I had that dialogue with them all the time. And they knew I heard them. And I was always there yeah. on their behalf. I, I I knew that. And these many of my horses were adopted. They came out of rescue, not so good situations. And they appreciated that I was always looking out for them. And they many of them didn't like to be in cross ties. They felt claustrophobic. And if I would just ground tie them, they were perfect. And one day we got done with this 28 year old gelding and he was a stoic man and a man of very few words. And as he walked away, cause I made sure I had meditation music going for them. Um, 
I and I made sure that whoever was working knew that he had some pain. So we had to manage that. Like, don't just yank his leg up. He's going to resist a little with this leg. I just need you to be gentle with him and then keep it at a level where it's comfortable and whatever. I was his mouthpiece one day after we were done and I walked him outside, took his halter off. He took a couple strides, stopped looked back at me and I swear, and you can call me crazy. I heard as plain as day, thank you. And then he turned and off he walked to join the rest of the herd. And my heart, I mean, I like burst into tears to feel such gratitude from this beautiful, beautiful horse. And now enough of me, let's get back into you. (laughs) <laughs> yeah and like you know with that it's it's all about your intent you know you they know your intent whether you tell it to them or not they're such energetic beings that and just talk to them mm-hmm. just talk to them you know and and tell them let them know what's on your heart let them know you know this is gonna suck for the next half hour but you'll feel better afterwards not right. everything that's good for you is going to feel good every moment of it and that's okay but afterwards you will feel better. And then, and, and after they do, then they go, huh? Okay. Crazy lady was right. I guess. Absolutely. You know, that reminds me of a time when my daughter who's now 40, but she was like seven years old and she was a figure stater and she had attempted a jump, fell and hit her chin and her, you know, this was just right. So we had to go to the clinic and, you know, even at that age, being very honest with her, listen, we're going to have to suture this. It's going, the worst part is going to be when they put the Novocaine in with the needle. Okay. I want you to look at mommy. We're going to breathe. Okay. We're going to do deep breathing in. We're going to just look in my eyes while they're doing that. So a bunch of nurses come into the room, they're, right? They're ready to strap this child down, anticipating it's going to be a crazy scene, right? And I said, she's fine. She knows what to expect. She'll be fine, right? So she locks eyes with me and we're breathing in through our nose and out through our, and they're doing, and one of the nurses turns around and looks at me and she's like, we don't even have adults that are this good. <laughs> and I said, no, why? Because I'm. we're being honest, you know, like she knew what to expect and that I was going to support her. And it's the same with the horses. I'm your advocate. I am here for you. I am so grateful to hear your philosophy on this and your practice. I'm, oh, I wish you lived closer. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Your your new so a new business so you've got stable wellness and then you have movement enhancing body work. Yep. So that's what I call um, my technique, and okay. um, I am actually in the process of launching a school, launching a teaching platform um, that is called the Animal Wellness Institute. And my goal it, with that is to be able to to educate. I mean, there's so I have so much knowledge, and again, I'm only one person. I have two young kids. Like, I I want to be able to have that happy work life relate, you know, part relationship, and be able to see my kids grow up. They're three and one, and there there's a lot going on in my life. And um, the the best way and the easiest way that I can help as many horses as possible is by teaching other people all of this knowledge that I have. It does me no good to just have it myself. And, um, and so the Animal Wellness Institute was created under that paradigm. Um, and it is, everything is in the process of going live. And um, it, within the next few, few months, it will be live and, and going and people will be oh learning. Oh my gosh. Um, Talk to me about something, if I may interject right yeah. here. So this um, educational forum, this school it, will it be online? Will it yeah. be virtual? Will okay. So Tell it's going to it's going to be a combination. Um, it is going to be it's on an online platform. It'll be on Kartra, 
and um, there'll be modules that you can go through individually. And then the, there'll be, you know, weekly calls or um, if you don't want to do the weekly calls, you know, there'll be recordings. Um, and then there'll be kind of two tracks. If you are just in this to help your own horses and better your relationship with your horse, then here's all the tools. This is this will keep them safe. Like this will keep you safe. This will improve your relationship. This will make your horses more comfortable. And it's all there's there's nothing in it that's going to cause any harm to the horses, um, which is a big, big thing for me because I see it every day. You know, people that are are unfortunately unknowingly or maybe knowingly um, hurting horses by doing things incorrectly or too harsh or too hard. Um, and with as energetic beings as horses are like the lighter, the better <laughs> and the better results you get. And so I've I've taken, you know, uh, the approach of it's basically what movement enhancing body work light so it's the everyday horse owner's ability to reckon to see their horse and say something's wrong and then the next step is accepting that that something is wrong and then we're not just going to leave you high and drive with yeah your you know these things are wrong this is how you make it better these are the fixes that you can do. These are the most important things. And I, you know, if you can't do all of them, this is where you start. And then once that's accomplished, then this is the next one that you start. And then it's also, you know, some hands-on techniques to be able to target that um, interaction and that connection that and that synergistic ability and that synergistic wellness that we're all looking for with our horses, that connection that, that every, you know, that we can get from no other creature out there. I mean, you know, you, you, you can't get this energetic synergistic um, approach of in connection with any other animal out there because they don't have as big of a capacity as what the horses do. And so it's, a, you know, partially online. And then I will offer um, hands-on as well. If people want to, yeah, I'm in it. This is awesome. I want to come and I want to learn from you on how do I get better, even better of a connection because there's, there's a feel to it. And, you know, obviously there's a lot that we can do online. There's a lot that I can critique online through video. Um, but at the same time, there's no better feeling than you're touching the horse, I'm touching you, and they go, holy crap, what was that? Mm. I can't teach that online. But if they, and so it'll be an optional thing, you know, if, if you want to come and really, really get in tuned and really learn this stuff and really see some differences, then Let's do it on, you know, let's do it live. And, uh, you know, so we go through the program and then have the option for the um, hands-on afterwards. Um, wow. And then eventually there will be more advanced courses and, and other stuff happening. Okay. And will you also be offering a certification program as well? Yep. Okay, beautiful. So for our, our listeners and viewers, if you are interested in what Dr. Harvey has to offer in this modality. Um, we will put her email in the description box. Yes, contact information. So please reach out to Dr. Sandra Harvey and uh, for to get on that waiting list and get in. Um, this is exciting. Oh my gosh. I'm so grateful for people like you. I can't even tell you. Wow. Here I am trying to read without glasses. Pardon me. <laughs> Let me try this. What are some of the most common issues that you see in horses um, that your movement enhancement body work addresses? Some of like the common stuff. Any kind of gait abnormality. Um, so in my area where I live in Northwest Pennsylvania, it's a lot of trail riders and a lot of barrel racers, pole benders, you know, the competitive style horses and a lot of like, you know, open show, lower level um, show horses. And really the the biggest thing is, with the barrel racers, especially is, oh, my gosh, they don't want to take the first barrel. They, you know, when we're running home, they they started bucking or, you know, they're doing doing something that they've never done before. Mm. 
And so we get a lot of um, just and behavioral changes. Um, unfortunately, typically the behavioral changes are down the road because most people, oh, they're just being a jerk or, oh, you know, they're just this, that, you know, giving them so many excuses as to why a horse is in pain and not accepting that it is actually pain. Sure. Um, and so pro the most common thing is, is just something's not right. My horse isn't moving right. They're not, mm. you know, they're, they're short striding, they're bucking, they're rearing, they're biting. They don't want to be saddled. Um, it's almost all starts out with a movement issue of mm. some sort. Excellent. Take note viewers. <laughs> we, we sometimes want to just jump to the behavioral thing, yeah. you know, and if the behavior's changing, especially if it's out, you know, like out of the blue, they're trying to tell you something. I had a mayor like that and she ended up having Lyme disease, mm -hmm. but it was such a drastic change for her, you know, when it came to, to saddling her up and even, uh, you know, Liberty work in the round pen and she was not visibly not comfortable. And I knew instantly we better start with some blood work. We better pull some titers and see what we're dealing with so we can roll things out. Right. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. In terms of wellness and body work, what are some indicators that horse owners should look out for to know when their horse may need an adjustment or body work? Sounds like we kind of yeah. Can so it? really the, the biggest thing, and obviously I get asked this question every day, uh, the biggest thing and the biggest way to know if something is, is going on is your horse is doing something they've never done before. Mm. <laughs> and I like to tell people horses have bad days. Yeah. Some days they don't want to be touched. Some days I don't want to be touched. Like Leave me Does alone. your husband know that? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> leave, you know, leave me alone. Let me have my, you know, my cookies and hot chocolate and my favorite blanket and just, just everybody leave me alone. And, and so like, if they've only done it once, make note of it, think about it, but don't go crazy. If you come out the next day and they're still doing it or or they you know they the next day you come out and they they seem to be back to normal um so you saddle them up you go and ride and then you come back two days later and they're doing that negative behavior again it's it's a repeatable thing because like i said everybody has bad days and you know if your horse is turned out and they go out and they do something stupid and you know they they slip and they tweak an ankle and they're a little bit sore for a day like I sprain my ankle every day. Like, you know, same thing happens to us. And yeah. so it's not a panic at that point. It's when these bad behaviors or when these negative things, you know, they're not moving right. Um, you know, they, they didn't eat or they, you know, they started looking at me when I put the saddle on or they, you know, they're flicking their tail when, when I put the saddle on or when I put the bridle on, or, you know, they, they've always ran to me in the pasture, but now they, they run away or, you know, it's, it's these, any kind of a negative behavior that they've never done before is it, that that's when I say, okay, pay attention. And then Think back, had they done this before or what are some other things that they might not be be doing? And then also start taking pictures. Pictures will tell you a lot about what's going on with your horse, whether they're losing weight, gaining weight, not standing appropriately. If all four legs aren't parallel, you know, um, perpendicular to the earth. And if they're, you know, you go put their bridle on and they're, you know, they don't take the bit nicely or they start, you know, gaping at the mouth or ears are pinning and they've never pinned their ears before you know you run your fingers down their back and all of a sudden they're ducking away from the pressure and mm. or is it something as simple as you know i i walked into my horse's stall and they turn their butt towards me mm. if they're not trained to do that and they've never done it before that's a very clear indicator of Absolutely. hey leave me alone and if, again, if it's just one day, maybe they have a little bit of a belly ache. Maybe they're tired. Maybe they had a long night partying with their friends. Like maybe they just don't, aren't in it that day. But if it's a repeated offense, that's when you need to look at something. And, Ooh. and I, all the time I get people, I see horses with ulcers every day and every day, uh, regularly. Mm -hmm. Oh, but they're still eating and their coat's still shiny. So they can't have ulcers. If yeah. they stop eating and their coat is dull, they've had ulcers for years. Like 
this is it. so let's catch things before they get bad. And that's why I'm a huge fan of maintenance because let me fix small problems before they turn into big problems. Right. You know, and especially with kids when when it's your kid riding, you know, um, l- let me fix things before the horse has only one thing that they can say. And that's no. Like when you push a horse to the point where they're attacking you, they've been telling you very you know for a long time that there's a problem and you just are ignoring it you're not accepting of it because obviously there is always the bad apple there's always the you know the meat eaters the man killers and you know in the wild and lions and sharks there's that always that rogue one that's gonna you know got something screwy in their brain and they're you know going after people but horses in general are not inherently mean creatures and will not have these negative issues or negative connotations towards humans unless there's something wrong they can't talk to us so they and if you you know they always start very low on the scale of something's wrong it's we started pinning our ears you know we we stepped away when we when you put the saddle on um we you know swished our tail when you know i asked him to do something or you know you you biting at the air or biting at their sides or standing not square that's a big one if your horse isn't standing square something's wrong mm. a horse wants to stand square and if they're not there's a problem is it, sometimes it's fixable. Sometimes it's not. That's when we got to look into things, but that's why maintenance is so important as well is let's fix things before they get real broke. Sure. And I think we need to, <clears throat> you said it like horses are subtle. They're able to communicate with each other in a herd by an ear turning a certain way, you know, they have, yeah. because as you said, they're prey animals. So they, they're looking that lead mayor, if she lifts her head up or everybody else says, oh, oh, we got to be, yeah. and she's going to tell us what to do. You know, if you are in tune with your horse, you're going to see those subtleties. You're going to see the eh, eh, with the tail or yeah. all of those things. And, you know, in regard to ulcers, which are seem to be very, very common in horses, um, I've had ulcers myself and I can tell you, I eat more when I have an ulcer because I'm feeding it. I'm hungrier. Mm-hmm. It hoits. So I want to put food in there and give all that acid and stuff, something to munch on, you know, and hopefully relieve some of that pain. So I, I totally, totally get that. Oh my goodness. So for horse owners who are new to equine body work, therapies, various ones, because you incorporate a lot. I love that you have such a huge toolbox to to pull from. Can you explain the potential benefits of chiropractic and osteopathic care for equines? So I think you've kind of, you have touched on that in earlier questions, but maybe let's, let's address that a little bit again. Yeah, absolutely. So really what it boils down to is comfort. And comfort and healing and putting the body in a position to heal itself. Because I, I mean, I'm not magic. Like I don't, I can't just voodoo something to, to magically heal, but I can put the body into a position to heal itself. The body will always heal itself given the appropriate input. Hey everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Backyard Horse Enthusiast. Well, actually... This is right in the middle of my interview with Dr. Sandra Harvey. Um, (laughs) We kind of got cut in our first interview. Look at me trying to get a hair or a fuzz off my lip. Um, We were interviewing two weeks ago and we were doing it on an old laptop that just cut out in the middle of our interview. We had four more questions and but we were done. So she travels everywhere, nonstop. So far this month of November, she has only been home for 30 hours. Mind you, she is a mother of two young children, okay? And she's traveling with her children and her mother 
so that she can do her continuing education. So I am thrilled that we made it work. It's now the 16th of November and we were able to catch up. That is, she's in Florida, just finished up part one of a five day continuing education for the work that she does. And so I'm thrilled that we're here and we can finish this interview and know that eventually I will make my way out to um, visit many of these uh, specialists, these clinicians, these vets, um, all of these people that I've been interviewing. My goal is to eventually hit the road with my dog and go see these people in person and capture uh, what they're doing um, in person. So pretty exciting times. And I want to thank you for joining us uh, for your continued support. We do have a Patreon uh, membership, but you can just help by uh, liking, commenting, Comment with some ideas that you may have for me that, you know, things that interest you as uh, far as equine. And I'll be sure to put that on my list and seek out um, professionals in that category to share with you. So thanks again. And if you feel like it, subscribe. I'm not going to tell you no. <laughs> All right. And here we go. All right. Welcome back, Dr. Harvey. It's so awesome to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me back again. <laughs> I so appreciate your patience with technology because, oh my gosh, you know, that's what happens when you're trying to push something, a piece of technology, you know, like you, you can make it another day. And then it says, no, I, no, I can't. And so- yep. Here we are. We're on a totally new laptop uh, with a lot more processing speed. So it just kind of forced me to have to take the plunge. It, it was time. So here we are. Now, where are you? This I, way? yeah. So I'm currently in Orlando, Florida. Um, I'm down here for an equine myofascial release course. And um, yeah, so it's been great. Wow. And, and what, what has this so far, what does your month look like for you? <laughs> this, this month has been a little, um, a little out of the norm. Um, for whatever reason, everything decided to happen in November. I, I could have had two other courses that I really wanted to take this month, but I just couldn't make them fit. Uh, so I spent the first seven days up in Ontario, Canada, with Dr. Deb Bennett. Um, I assisted her on a whole horse dissection. And uh, then I came home for a day and then drove down to Florida. And I am uh, I just finished up a uh, equine myofascial release one yesterday. It was a five-day course with um, Ruth Mitchell Galladay. And then starting tomorrow, we have MFR2, which is a three-day course. And then I will um, be heading back home for the rest of the month. Wow, girl. And and I, you've got your mom there and your children. Yeah, yeah. You. Yep, my mom and my kids came with me uh, down here to Florida. So she's been watching them during the day while I'm off learning. And um, she's got them corralled in the room right now, so they don't disturb oh. me. <laughs> and well, and okay. it, it's been if good. They, yeah, if they jump in, th this is real life. We're <laughs> okay. Does. My dog is behind me. She may start talking. So we don't care. This is this is real life. And honestly, I am so impressed by all that you are juggling to to you know keep up with your continuing education to be the best. In, in your industry, I mean, I, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm exhausted. You know, when I <laughs> look at what your schedule has been like, what you've been participating in for, for education, I'm, I'm blown away. I'm like, and with children. Okay. 
I feel like a slouch. <laughs> no, no, I am. Uh, I'm, I'm very lucky. I have an extremely supportive husband and family and uh, mm -hmm. my kids travel really well. And um, so I, I'm able to go and do these extraordinary learning opportunities to advance myself, my career, to be able to just help my clients as much as I can. And, um, and it, I'm, I'm just super lucky and I love everything about it. I mean, I'm, I'm a serial learner and, Clearly. um, and it's just, it's great. <laughs> I love it. So grateful that you are a serial learner. We need, we need more of you. I'm running into quite a few, uh, interviewees, uh, lately have, I'm so impressed with the continuing education, the, the, the thirst for knowledge and yeah. knowing yeah. that, you know, some of us laymen are going to, uh, benefit from all of this. It's, it's incredible. So thank you for that. I'm going to jump back into our questions. We have four more that we'd like to touch on, and then we'll let you get back to your crazy and hectic life, but beautiful life, I'm sure. So I'm going to ask you, how do you assess in each individual course's needs to tailor your approach in your movement enhancing body work? What are you looking at? What are you? So I I look at everything. Um, I take everything into a, a, into account because the the feet are important, the teeth are important, the way they live is important. Are they in a stall twenty four hours a day? Are they out uh, in a pasture twenty four hours a day? Are they living in mud? Are they living on hills? Like everything, everything works together. And so I I tend to ask a lot of questions. I I'm a very blessed that I am a super observer. So I notice things that most people won't. Um, and I can pick up on nuances that most people wouldn't and both within their horses and in, in the, how the horses are living. Um, and so I kind of, it's a big picture puzzle to me. And, and so I, I just take every piece that I possibly can get information wise and and then look at every inch of the horse. I check every joint, every bone, every muscle, and really just follow the body. Let it tell me what it needs. Um, every animal gets a full skeletal evaluation. They get a full um, soft tissue evaluation. And then, you know, we, we talk about the feet, we talk about diet, we talk about teeth, we talk about, you know, what can we do to make your horse happier and healthier? And what can we do to save you money? Because how many people do we know that are just wasting money on supplements mm -hmm. or not feeding appropriately? And so it's also a goal of mine to be able to try and save people money on, on wasting on different supplements or not feeding properly or anything that, that they can possibly do because horses are expensive and, and we need to give them the best bang for their buck so that they can care for them the best that they can. And so I really, I take a whole horse approach. I look at literally everything. Um, you know, what is their herd dynamic look like? What is their movements look like? I, I don't typically have the horse, um, lunge for me because I don't want to sway my, experience. I don't want it to, I don't want their movement to make me take away from what the body's actually doing because of compensations. I, I don't want those compensations to get in the way of my views and of what I'm actually seeing. And so I, um, but I, you know, I notice how they stand, are they standing square? Do they not want to stand square? Are they fidgety? Are they, and, and while this is going on, I'm asking the, you know, questions, if they're doing something weird, Hey, do they, do they always want to do this? Like, you know, or have they always done this? And usually the owner, um, it, it'll be a, a, yeah, oh yeah, they've done that for years or, oh no, I've never, I've never seen them do that before, or I've never noticed that. And, you know, so we say, okay, well, it may be something it may not, but pay attention and, and touch base. And, you know, if it's something we need to address later, then, then we can. Um, but really it's a whole horse approach. It's a, it's the environment, the feed, the, the body, the tack, um, how they're being ridden, how long, when, and, and it's everything. And really for me, management is, um, is, is super important as well, because we only really spend an hour with them a day, um, typically, you know, and so there's 23, those extra 23 hours that they're standing around, like 
that's the most important part of their life. And so managing that is, is super important. Sure. Wow. And you mentioned the herd dynamics, which also can affect a lot of other things that are happening with your horse, you know, something like, uh, fecal water syndrome, free fecal water syndrome. That's a big one. You know, if you've got a horse that's low in the, in the hierarchy, um, that, that can create uh, so much. Wow. So thank you for that. Do you have some success stories that stand out to you in terms of your approach, uh, in your movement enhancement body work? Yeah. I mean, really anytime a horse gets better, it's, it's a standout, you know, Uh, and, and really what we do, what I do, it's every horse does get better. Um, it's, but you have to be, it's the level of better that you're looking at because a 28 year old who's, you know, crippled in the knees is not going to make the drastic change that a three-year-old who just ran into the wall is going to, Uh, you know, every case is different. Um, Some of my favorite things to work on are babies. Um, One of the coolest things I've I've ever done. um, I had a a young foal. I think she was less than, she was definitely less than a month old. She was only a couple of weeks and her, her legs were just so stocked up. I mean, they were like stovepipes from stifle down and the vets had no idea what's going on. They're pulling blood. They're saying cellulitis. They're saying this, that, the other thing, but there's no heat back there. She just had stovepipes for legs. And um, talking to the owner, she had a hard birth and um, they had a pull and, you know, pull her out and everything. And um, so what I found was that her sacrum and her pelvis were very locked up. Nothing was moving there. And so the sacrum, the pump in the sacrum wasn't working. And so as soon as we got everything moving from head to tail, all the bones moving appropriately and got all of those channels open, all that fluid by the next day was completely gone. And uh, the owner sent me a video and I was like, I like I I had an idea that it was, you know, it would get better, but I had no idea that it was going to going to be that quick. And um, so that was one of my favorites. And, you know, she's a beautiful, beautiful mare now. And, um, you know, at that point, the vets wanted to put her down because they thought it was a systemic infection. And, you know, and so we got her worked on and she's thriving. She's doing great. Oh, my gosh. That's beautiful. I'm like cheering up. <laughs> oh, because her life could have turned out or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So different. Wow, that's beautiful. Do you offer any advice or simple body work techniques that owners can perform between sessions to support their horse's health and movement? Do you do you offer that to your clients after you've done do. a session with their horse? I do. Absolutely. Depending on the client, because some clients are just not interested. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I absolutely give people things, su- simple, easy things that they can do. And I really focus on safety, um, safety for the horse, safety for the owner. Um, I you know don't want anybody to get hurt. And then mm-hmm. also every, every exercise or technique or anything that I give clients, it has a twofold approach for me. It is a, it's beneficial for the horse, but it's just as beneficial for the owner. So I give exercises and, and techniques for these people to build the connection between their horse and themselves on a, because everything that I give is safe. So it's slow, it's methodical, it's close. There's nothing harsh. We're not picking up legs and yanking around We're, you know, it's, it's very close and very contact and just quiet, comforting connection type work that is so, so important. And me as a practitioner coming in, like I can get to that connection point with the animal, but it takes me a lot longer than what the owner would be able to do. Whereas I can come into the owner and I can show them what I would do, you know, by these simple um, tail exercises and neck exercises and, you know, do this on the neck, do this here, rub here, put your hands here. And, um, and, and 
the benefit that the owner gets is almost more than what the horse gets. Uh, but it's extremely beneficial to both of them because it increases the connection between them. And it also provides a therapeutic effect to the horse and also gives the owner more of a entunement into their horse to know when things may or may not be correct. Um, and then, you know, I do have some specific instances where a horse is super sore in a specific area. And so I'll give um, some specific massage type techniques, um, depending on, on the case and, and situation. But yeah, I love giving owners things to do. Um, for the twofold, like, you know, they, they don't know that I'm giving it to them to increase their connection, <laughs> but, mm -hmm. um, but the horses thrive for that and they love it. And then, and it also just benefits their, their connection and their relationship, but also gives the horse the, the benefit in terms of a therapeutic effect as well. Indeed. Um, if I may share a brief, brief story of um, a gelding that I had taken in uh, emaciated, every stereotypical behavior would show colic during dinners, was not allowed to integrate with the herd. They didn't want him. He was such a weak link. They were like, absolutely not. So I spent the, well, the first year, you'll think I'm crazy with hot mashes twice a day or mashes for him twice a day. And I would sit in an Adirondack chair with a tube of banamine just in case he was going to go down because he would work himself up. He paced, he colicked, he weaved, he did it all. Um, so I had to just remove him from the paddock, from the other horses, and sit with him and breathe with him while he ate. And here's that connection, how it manifested. One afternoon, I came home from work. I checked on everyone. I went upstairs and laid down and fell asleep. And I woke up, like just sat up straight and said, somebody's hurt. Somebody's, I mean, I had this, and I ran down the stairs and I ran to the back door to the window. And I saw that gelding walking up the pathway. I always kept a pathway from the different pastures. They had to come to a central location for water. That allowed me at different times to observe them coming up and walking and that. And I see him coming, walking up the, the pathway, dead lame. But tell me, like out of a dead sleep, I sat up so startled, knew instantly somebody's not well somebody's hurt like injured and it was him oh. yep so um preach in here because i totally have witnessed it experienced that type of connection yeah. and i'm grateful for it yeah Our, i have one last question for you so you can get on with your day and and so appreciative of you making the time to, to do this and to finish this interview. Oh, absolutely. It's been wonderful. I, I love it. We're going to have all your information in the description box for our viewers. Okay. Without, you know, the information you wish to share with our viewers, should they wish to get more um, information about what you do. Absolutely. Okay. That'd be great. Wonderful. Where do you see movement enhancing body work evolving in the next few years and are there any future and and you're in it right now are there any future developments that you're particularly excited about yeah so i have a course um i am getting ready to launch a beta version of it um I, I have everything recorded and it's all online. And um, as I continue to go through some of these other courses that I'm taking currently, I'm like, oh man, like I really need to add this in. I really need to add this in. Uh -oh. um, and it's it's an owner's course. Um, and it really, it's a bodywork style of what you can do to help your horse and what you can do to increase your connection with your horse through, through all of this. And it, you know, covers, um, some nutrition, it covers some saddle fit, it covers some of the basics. Um, but it's really kind of an introduction into equine movement, enhancing body work. 
And, um, and then through that, like uh, the ideas, I, I, I probably at least once or twice a week, I'm writing down, Oh, I need to do something with this. And like, Oh my gosh, like this would be such a cool course to do. And, um, you know, I'm only one person and the more people that I can educate, the more horses that I can help. And, um, and that's my goal. You know, these, these guys are amazing creatures and we don't deserve them. And so if the, just helping as many as possible. And, and that has to happen by being able to have an outreach. And, um, and so that's my goal and, you know, in, and the growth and just, I, and I love teaching I've discovered. Um, and, and I love seeing that light bulb moment when people, when people get it, when they feel the tissue and they go, Oh my gosh, is that, is that really what I just did? Yes. That's what you just did. And, um, and, you know, instilling that confidence into people and, and then just seeing the connection with the horses as it, as it changes drastically. And I think we're in a really great position in the world right now where people are waking up and really becoming more in tune with themselves and with their horses. And, um, and so it's just exciting. And, uh, yeah, so I do have some some future courses in the, in the bank that I'm working on, but I do have the, um, level one course. It is live right now. It is, um, uh, we'll be reaching out for beta testers very soon and, uh, and then going from there. Okay. So will that course be available on your website? Is it, is it something that I can share a link with. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. If people, if people want to go on and start getting information immediately, um, they can go to equine wellness toolkit.com. And uh, there's some free goodies there for them. Um, and then that will put them in contact with any of the information that's coming out of the animal wellness Institute and with the beta group and the and the listing and and any future courses that that come down the line and so we just wanted to provide you know a little bit of an intro to me and a, some free stuff for them and a little bit about what's in the course and what movement enhancing body work covers and what it is and so we created this um, wellness toolkit to be able to give Beautiful. to people do you have a qr code um, yeah i can create one <laughs> Let's do that because yeah. I'll embed it right into this video so people okay. can just scan that. You know, yeah. we're all about ease of. Uh, Absolutely. So, so you get that to me and I'm going to embed it right into. In fact, once this is published, it's going to be right there. So people can just yeah. scan it and get right to your site and get all the information yeah, from you. Awesome. Oh, my gosh. Well, my new friend. I hope that in the future, I can actually come out in person and um, see you doing doing this live. Absolutely. More than awesome. welcome. Many time. Beautiful. I, that's my, my goal is to hit the road eventually. Yeah. So you're on my list. Oh, I would love it. All right. Well, I thank you so much for joining us on the Backyard Horse Enthusiast. Thank you for all of your wisdom, for your passion, for everything, equine, the, the health and connection of these beautiful, beautiful creatures that we're so blessed to share our lives with. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. This has been wonderful. Absolutely. We'll see you soon. All right. Have a good day. You as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm.